Hey guys, what's going on? I know it's been a very long time since we made a video, but we're back. Um, can't offer you anything more than we've been busy with life and things like that. So anyway, to get to it, today we're going to show you how to use your actual old controllers on a Raspberry Pi. As you can see, this is not a USB. Uh, it's not a USB N64 controller. This is an actual uh, N64 controller. So we're going to be using this. Um, on a Raspberry Pi. Now this is a Model B. This is the latest one. It's about $35. Um, so all you need is, of course, a Raspberry Pi, a case, an SD card. Um, this one is 32 gigabyte. And then an optional Wi-Fi connector. Um, now for the Raspberry Pi, we're going to be using Emulation Station or RetroPi. There's plenty of tutorials online uh, where you guys can go and check it out and see how to set it up. Um, but basically we're going to put the, the Raspberry Pi together in the case and then we'll show you the controllers and the adapters we have for the controllers, alright? Alright, now that we got the case and everything assembled, you can see your Ethernet, your USB, HDMI, micro uh, USB is where the SD card goes. Obviously, we went into the computer, loaded our emulation station. I'm gonna uh, put in the SD card. We can put okay, there we go. And then, of course, like I said, optional. This is a Wi-Fi unit. Um, it's the only one I found that works with the emulation station, no problem. So that's the case. We'll go ahead, hook it up to the TV, and now I'm gonna show you what I have for the controller. So. This is a SNES USB adapter made by Tommy, T-O-M-E-E. -E. I believe they make controllers too, but they made this adapter. I bought it for, I think, $7 online. Um, and basically, this allows you to use an actual old school Super NES controller. As you can see, it has the old connector, plugs in, and this goes into the Raspberry Pi. Um, so, this I prefer because for games, uh, Obviously, that you're gonna be button mashing like Street Fighter things like this. This just feels better than a USB controller. It has the weight, it has the plastic. You know, it's built to last. Whereas a lot of the USB controllers nowadays are made of cheap plastic and they don't really work very well. So that's why I prefer using the actual controller. Um, and of course, you get in a sec second adapter so you can play two players. They do both work at the same time, um, and I'll show you that in a second. And of course, the N64 controller as well. Um, and as you can see, this one has a, a new joystick uh, as opposed to the original, which had this thin, flimsy joystick, which you could even hear. Doesn't work very well. But uh, maybe if you guys want to see how I replace this in a future video, let me know in the comments down below. But again, this is an actual Nintendo controller. Not only does it work better, you know, feel better, but they don't have these cool colors in the USB one. So. This is a uh, controller adapter, same same concept. It has the original adapters for the controllers, but it's USB. This one's made by Mayflash. Um, I got this on Amazon for about 10 bucks. And the good thing about this is that you get two controller ports with one USB, so I really like that. Same, same concept, works very well. So we're gonna plug this all up to the TV and show you how it works. All right, so we got the RetroPie set up. We have it plugged into the TV with the power, the HDMI, the Wi-Fi connector. We have the controller adapter plugged in to the USB and the controller. So as you can see, we have it working on the menu itself. I have ROMs loaded up. I'm not going to give you guys a lecture about that, um, but I do own Street Fighter 2 Turbo, so we're going to play that. And uh, the first time you plug this in and start it up, it's going to ask you to configure it. Super Nintendo is a little bit easier because it's straightforward A, B, X, Y, L, and R. The Nintendo 64 is a little bit different. The right analog stick is the C buttons, but you can look on the uh, RetroPie site and it'll give you uh, the button configuration for that. Um, and again, as I mentioned, you can plug two controllers in and versus, they work at the same time. You only have to set up one of these controllers and it'll transfer over to the other one. Um, and as you can see, all the buttons are working. For the Super Nintendo, and I'll show you Nintendo 64 next. 
All right, so we got the Nintendo 64, same thing. Controllers plugged into the USB adapter, and then the adapter is plugged into the Raspberry Pi. Um, loaded the games on there. Same concept, the analog stick doesn't work in the menu, but the D-pad does. Um, we'll show you Super Mario 64, which is another game I own. Um, and of course, like I said, the C buttons, A and B start all work. Um, for the left bumper, since it's not used in many games, I hit, I mapped it as select so that you can exit out of the game by hitting start and select together. Um, but I'll just show you real quick that all the buttons work. And again, like I mentioned before, if you want to see me replace this joystick so it's not so flimsy, let me know in the comments and I might do a video which you can see A works to jump, kick, C buttons for the camera, which are a little wonky. Z. Yeah, so there you go. Now you can use your original controllers on your RetroPie and uh, let me know what you think. Leave a comment if you want to see me do something else. Also, um, if you want to see me maybe build a case for this with the uh, USB connectors attached and maybe have On the Loose the Artist painted, let me know as well. As always, make sure you subscribe, like, and comment. See you guys later.